Greetings ladies and merchants and welcome to this latest narration of the web series of the nature of predators. If you're new to the series there is a playlist listed down below in the description and as always I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 161 Memory Transcription Subject Anzo Yotel Technician Specialist Date Standardized Human Time March 23rd 2137 The march to Alpha defied expectations with the lack of open confrontation we faced. The Corsian Commonwealth had a vast expanse of territory. As the original founder, their most storied colonies predated the Federation itself. Their population had necessitated spreading out across the stars, so even after a hypothetical conquest of Alpha, it would have to be seen whether the scattered billions would surrender. The tentacled bastards used every system of their official 20 light year territory bubble, which was how their manufacturing power was so absurd. It was also why I expected us to be stopped by border outposts like the Gojits had, but those sat unguarded, with only automated turrets and lasers left behind. The stationary targets could be picked off with little risk to us. Within inhabited systems, FTL disruptors were running, which impeded our journey. We chose a passing that traveled by the fewest settlements, but were forced to burn days in sublight travel. Wary of the Colshuns using humanity's tricks against us, we kept our own anti-FTL signals online. The last thing we needed was asteroids being warped atop us, or ships leaping right into the center of our ranks. It might have been possible to take the colony worlds, except that Colshun bombers were clustered around their own planets. What was the point of that? I grasped that they only cared to defend Alpha, but this maneuver must have been with the intention to paint humanity as butchers. Perhaps it's a bluff, but even if we got the UN to agree to glass the colonies, it'd waste our munitions. Maybe it is a cold-blooded sacrifice to tilt the scales at the main event. Taking the outpost worlds by foot isn't viable. Then we'll be lucky to successfully occupy Arthur. I couldn't imagine how the cautions on the ground felt. Seeing their own government using them as hostages, several humans suspected a trap on the planet's bounds. Whether it be from planet-to-surface munitions, kamikaze bombers, or hidden orbital defenses, we opted to stick to the mission parameters and limit our engagements before Alpha. I couldn't help but notice the bare-bone defenses by the backwaters, with patrols seeming to be cancelled. Was the Commonwealth planning to go out with a glorious last stand? Had the cutoff from over 200 allies caused them to conserve their numbers from the home system? Whatever the reason for the quiet deployment, it felt like a calm before the storm. It was strange that they had expended so much manpower on failed boarding ambushes, though as the galaxy's most popular species, lives seemed to have little proportional value to them. The Colchians knew we wanted to occupy their world, so targeting manned vessels would mean those vessels needed repairs. What was the point of stalling our advance beforehand if they weren't impeding us in surrounding systems now? I couldn't figure out what their angle was, but they'd been buying time for something. Well, this is it. I verified the sensor calibrations as we dropped outside the FTL disruptors around Alpha's system. I'll have a read on how many ships they have soon. Well, gee, I hope it's not millions. They've always been hiding their true capacity. What if it is millions? Carlos can't exactly say. Shoot them all to that, Sullivan grumbled. Carlos scrunched his face in confusion. Um... Why not? Do we have the fecking ammunition for that? Even this Atavast yodel can count bullets. Samantha swept her auburn hair out of eye. We've been planning to get these feckers for a long time. Time to fix the galaxy's crazy alien problem. I've got a bullet with Melbourne's name on it for the first Colchian to walk in my sights. Likewise, I'm doing this for Lian. We cleared those colonizers off our planet once, I said. There is nothing you can do to these bastards that would match the thousand year sum of their evil. Tyler snorted. First, I don't agree, but it is not the damn Olympics. Before your aliens asked, that's a big athletic contest with the shiny medals and the swimmers and the hurdles. We uh, didn't ask. Ha! That's rich coming from a living geyser of fun facts. See, much better name for him than Atavist Sovlin. <clears throat> If I have to fight alongside a total barbarian, I'm glad it is this one, the Gojit admitted. 
I never would have imagined how much I'd care about a yodel and literal fecking predators when I turned myself in. Though, you all leave much to be desired. You're my crew. Samantha glowered at him. I don't know why I expect a racist war criminal to give proper compliments, but you're making me glad that we're about to see action. Please dole out some of the now shut the fuck up orders, Officer Cordona. Fine, listen up. Here's what I will need handled. Monzo numbers, sovereign tactical suggestions. Tyler barked. Good luck. You all know what we're up against. This squiddy's got home field advantage and they're packing heat. We scrounged up over 100k of our own ships, so that's a good crap. But it is us, a smaller number of Yodel, technocracy ships that we could bring in, and another bit of sapient coalition padding. There's been calls to others' powers, but... We don't have them now, Carlos sighed. It'll be alright. Whatever they have waiting for us, I know tactics are on our side. Well, we haven't unlocked an infinite ammo glitch in reality, so tactics won't matter if they've got us too outgunned. Plasma has to recharge, and the rest of our munitions ain't gonna replenish on the fly. Hanzo, do you have the enemy's numbers? I straightened my ears, waiting for the inconclusive blips to solidify into a proper count. Our glide had almost brought us within visual range of the nearest ships, but there was a larger formation scattered throughout the system. Orbital rings by orbital ring, it became clear the cautions hadn't left any stop along the way uncovered. Pushing through to Arthur itself would mean vanquishing a brutal onslaught at every step. And I couldn't imagine other surprises weren't lurking for us. My readout sourced data from our vast array of vessels, running predictive analysis to fill the gaps from vague, far-off points. My ears pinned back in unease as I watched the total numbers of hostiles climb. Worst of all, a solid chunk of the foes on our vicinity couldn't be matched to the known Shadow Fleet markers. There was an estimated 96,000 vessels from the manned public caution armada, and over 200,000 that were Shadow Fleet, a jaw-dropping number that dwarfed our attack force. However, I was watching the full enemy tally climb past 500,000 before it leveled off. The computer didn't buy that the rest were Commonwealth made. It racked its data banks for other alternatives, including the simplest possibility, that some of their 200 allies had come despite the catastrophic cyber attacks. Yet, the homogeneity of the ships suggested that it was a single entity, which led my brain to a startling possibility. Which parties in the galaxies have that many ships? I'd assumed that it was the Arxal Dominion, except that I don't see how the Greys could have been persuaded to fight alongside Federation prey. Let's start with the easy news, while it is running a search for more comprehensive analysis, I said. We're looking at about 500,000 hostiles in system. Tala narrowed his eyes. That's, uh... The easy news? Well, it's not a million ships like Sovereign was afraid of. Sovereign waved his claws angrily. Oh, half a million ships. That's so much better. Wait, what if Onzo applied sensor filters by mistake? Maybe he's overstudying it. The very first time we worked together, you accused me of that same shit. My work is damn good. Good as any the human here. If you can't see that, you're the never-pouched primitive. I'm sorry. Who was the captain of a warship? Who's trusted for tactical advice? Captain Monaghan? Technically, that's the correct answer, wise ass. Samantha laughed. I don't see a problem. We beat them with numerical odds against us many times over. Cause the best minds are on our team. How is this any different? Carlos scowled at his fellow guard. This is it. Every trick they have up their sleeves they're going to use on us. We expect some of those plays to be as dirty as feck. They also have defensive fortifications to support their ships all across the system. There's a reason the plan is to manually take over the moon's orbital defenses. The brass must think that we can't get close enough with bombers. I flinched as my console flashed, confirming my suspicion. I'll tell you what else is different. 200,000 of the ships are from the Arxor Dominion. What? Tyler hissed. Sovereign's spines bristled with a dangerous lividness. Those fucking... Uh, the Heartless Greys do know who starved them, right? And after everything the Oxer did to us, to the herd, Arthur is working poor and poor with them. It wasn't enough that this all started because of the Federation. They have to keep it going. I know our suffering means feck all to them, but the Greys and the Caution's really are one and the same. Keep your head, Captain Racism. We know there's no bar that's too low for them. I can't say I expected this. 
but I also think the Dominion is less dangerous than the Shadow Fleet. We still have the mountain to climb, but it's now or never. When the other 200 species get back on their feet, those numbers would be a million plus, I finished. Insurmountable. Channel your anger, Sovereign, and use it to kill them all. The Gojut gritted his teeth. With pleasure. It's time to correct my final mistake. Years of service to the slying, sifkit brained federation. Watch your tactical input, Tyler questioned. Sir, I feel that we should target these Dominion ships now. This isn't solely due to my personal vendetta with those bastards. They're manned ships, but ones that are more competent than the Colchian crude vessels. It'll keep us clear of the lights out drones too. Our weapons have the advantage, so that we can cut the grace down to size. On so do you agree? I masked my surprise at having my opinion solicited. I do agree. I don't know what these Dominion crews were told, but I'm sure several aren't thrilled of their present alliance. There appears to be a group massing by the nearby gas giant, attempting to spring an ambush if we leave them be. We don't want to lose their signatures and have gravity fields muddy the waters. Then I'll advise the captain. She'll handle coordination with our allies. Find us a prime target on sensors, Anzo, and send to the viewport on them. Consider it done. As Tyler strolled over to Monahan's post, I brewed in my unvoiced doubts over the numerical disadvantage. It seemed like we didn't have enough ships to take the system. Under the circumstances, the best option might have been to circle back and avoid a confrontation that was slanted so heavily against us. However, another part of my brain knew that this was the best that the odds were going to get. Now that the Federation wasn't donning the guise of a peaceful organization, they could crank out more ships than humanity could with the sheer scale of their empire. If we let the Colchians have time to get a new manufacturing plant off the ground, there was no way for the Terrans to match it. It's impressive how quickly humanity ramped up their shipmaking capacity, putting Earth's entire industrial might into overdrive. Going from zero battle-worthy craft to thousands upon thousands. Whether by slapping drives and donations from allies or by splicing drones together from scratch. That said, it is now or never for taking Alpha, and hopefully the Federation down. Tyler gave me a confident nod upon his return. My selection had been a Dominion bomber that was showing battle scars on its hull. Much like our own, the enemy craft had undergone repairs but nothing could truly be put back to the same quality after it was broken. Other sections of the invading fleet were designated to separate tasks. Yotel technocracy ships were joining Terran drone advances on the Shadow Fleet hideouts, pushing deeper into the system. The meager assortment of Sapien Coalition forces were challenging Colchian crewed ships, pitting the two weakest links against each other. The last one seemed like a toss-up of who stampeded first, though I suspected that it was derisive to think that way. Small laser station powering up from within the ring debris, I barked, spotting the warning on my screen. Captain Monaghan pursed her lips. Don't deviate from our present course. Lock plasma fire on the Dominion hostile and prepare for evasive maneuvers if we're fired upon. As our powerful railguns faced off against the Dominion's pair, I trusted that we had the edge and range while lacking recharge speed and anti-evasion measures. The true advantage was the shield-breaking missiles, which were dumped into gas-giant adjacent enemies, unless the Colchians had done something so reckless as passing along their replicated technology to the Arxel, the Greys wouldn't have an advantage. Unshielded foes were forced to pirouette behind cover of the planet's rings, where ice particles and small rocks absorbed several beams, we didn't have a clear shot, while they could pick their angle from a strategic location. To make us feel more surrounded, station-based lasers torched the path through Terran ships. They had enough energy to cut through several of our craft, shields and all, with a single blow. Our advance turned in to address the troublesome planetary defense, chucking any high-yield bombs we had in station's direction. Its defenses were able to cause some premature detonations, though the indirect exposure was enough to clear its surrounding debris. That left a clean ticket for the antimatter munitions to punch through, blowing the installation of Rauchi's domain. While we'd been able to mop up that issue, I could see why larger versions around Alpha would be a major problem. The Gaulshan homeworld must be a fortress. The Arcs all picked this perfect location to set up shop and compensate for their weakness, 
They might be lazy in the present day, but they're not stupid. There's no question why they've been able to terrorize the whole galaxy for years. We still have a long way to go after this, sir, Sovereign advised Tyler, amid nerve-wracked claws chewing. They've been able to mitigate their losses, and we've taken some hits. If they would last down at this rate, all the way to Arthur, we won't make it. We need to rethink our strategy. I don't know. Figure out why the Dominion is working with the Federation at all. I fucking hate the idea of working with them, but I don't see how we can take them on. Turning them might be the best tactical advice I can give. Officer Cardona looked surprised by that suggestion. Thank you for your objectivity, Sovereign. Intelligence back home has been appraised of the Dominion's arrival, but we don't have enough information to try any outreach yet. I'll be candid with you all. We could use double the ships at our disposal to have a viable chance. Wish we'd got more than 38 fucking allies, cause it's a real David versus Goliath. A real what? Little guy versus big guy. We just have to keep fighting and pray for a turnaround. We'll take Arthur, or die trying. That might be bleak, but it's the God's honest truth. With those ominous words hanging in the air, I felt inertial dampeners rushing to keep up as we zigzagged. Dodging plasma required constant surveillance of target locks and inbound munitions. Interceptors deployed in front of us as many missiles homed in on us. Weapons had only just gotten our plasma back online, having to rely on connected turrets in the downtime. We fired off another shot, and a glancing plasma response from the Dominion caused a slight dip in our shielding. Finding cover was the best way to hold our own. The Terran fleet had deployed a few barrier walls to replicate the gas giant's ring's advantage, but those could only absorb a few hits. It was nothing compared to the millions of fragments created by nature to hide within. I squinted at the sensor screen for any useful insights to pass along, and my tail drooped as I spotted ship activity from the edge of the system. The cautions had more vessels at the ready, warping into encircle us. It had looked like they had vacated every outpost or colony garrison in their possession, but I suppose that had been the trick as well. While our Terran comrades had left a rear guard anticipating the strategy, we were already stretched thin against half a million defenders. The idea of juggling more combatants and flanks would put an even greater strain on our resources. As much as I'd been excited to take the fight to the Federation, I wasn't sure this was a battle we could win, if the enemy still had more resources to summon. Anzo, are you alright? You look like you just saw a ghost, Tyler growled. I attempted to correct my downcast expression, but my body language stayed deflated. I did, uh, ours. I'm counting 30,000 new Dominion signatures, freshly warped in at the edge of FTL Disruptor Boundary. For every few we cut down, they could just bring in more. There's no telling how many ships they really have. That changes things. We have to win this fight, but no commander would advocate suicide for our fleet. If the other side's true numbers are still in question, this battle is already lost. I'll bring this to Monaghan's attention, and maybe, like Sovereign said, we do have to rethink our strategy. I hope that we can find another way. I'll keep you appraised. I ducked my head in acceptance and watched the primate hustle over to the captain to impart the Morrison message. Optimism was becoming a colossal struggle as we swerved around the battlefield to maintain our very lives. Once we found a pass to cut through the Dominion's ring forces, I had faith that we could start pushing our momentum in this area. The question was how many engagements we could survive before our fleet collapsed under the pressure. If tons of enemy reinforcements were sitting in the sidelines, getting to offer might be too much of a hurdle for even humanity to surpass. End of chapter. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members. Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.